Cheers, mate. Cheers for that water. <laughs> top top <Yeah>. water. <laughs> uh, mm. So, mate, thank you for your time. Uh, very welcome. Um, we talked before the podcast. We talked before. Yeah. I3 Gen. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me about I3 Gen. Okay. Uh, so Sail, Sales pitch me. <coughs> oh, I'm not going to do the sales <laughs> pitches. We would be rubbish on Dragon's Den, <laughs> which is straight out the window. Um, so I3 Gen was set up by my, my business partner, Paul. Um, he has a background in uh, PR and marketing, mostly business to business on the, the tech side. Um, and he realized that a lot of what the military are trying to achieve in information operations at the minute uh, are some of the problems that they've been dealing with on the, in the civilian marketplace for quite some time now. And he saw a lot of uh, commonalities. But the, the problem that he was up against was if you're going to pitch to the military, you need someone who speaks the language. Uh, because as you and I both know, we don't we don't speak normal English. Um, and it just so happened that he was attending a conference in London uh, the military social media conference and uh, I was giving a presentation on doing some counter propaganda work that I did in Somalia and uh, he approached me afterwards and said look this is this is my vision um, how do you feel about it and at the time you know I was working as a consultant I thought yeah great great opportunity there to bring his skill set uh, and my skill set together <clears throat> and now we offer um, a range of uh, activities mostly on the training side but we can also do capability development and red teaming uh, between the two of us and a, and a group of associates that we've that we've assembled um, and we've done some stuff with NATO which has been very interesting we're doing a lot of stuff with the army at the minute and we're trying to get on board and do some work for the navy and the RAF as well so got a real joint flavor to it so yeah it's really interesting times really interesting work just just going back yeah um so what what we you doing in Somalia <laughs> psyop stuff no no not quite not quite no i'm not a psyoper a lot a lot of people kind of jump to that conclusion it could be considered though it could, it be, could consider be considered yeah a psyops, it could be considered it? well it psyops. is psyops it is 100%. yeah but i've never done the course so you know i can't i can't claim that guess title. who has <laughs> <laughs> end, oh there I you end, go i ended up randomly on the uh the old tactical psyops, psyops course it was a psyops uh psychological operations planners course yeah yeah, yeah. me there was a there was a, a staff sergeant from a flight sergeant from the RAF. Yeah. And then everyone else is flipping boffins. Like, Kern, yeah. I think the minimum rank was a major. No, I think colonels and up. I thought, what am I doing yeah. here? Why have they sent some three-power bloke down here? Like? <laughs> but the, the, skills are, the skills are exactly the same. You know, you do your target audience analysis. You work out what message you need to get to which audience and what's the best channel kind of stuff. It's probably the most fascinating course I, I've, I've been on yeah. in the military. It blew my mind. Yeah. It blew my mind. It, it's amazing what's out there. So I, I, I was originally out there. I did a nine-monther as... Uh, as uh, a military advisor to the Somali National Army, which w was fascinating. Um, it wasn't the tour that I asked for, uh, but you know that's the, the downside of being a reservist. You uh, you get to go on tours uh, as and when you choose, but you don't necessarily get to choose which one you get. Um, so I did nine months out there uh, working with the Somali National Army, both on the, the British mission that's out there uh, and also the European Union one, which is out there, which is headed by the Italians, which was fascinating. Uh, and then I came back from that and there was an opportunity to go back out there as a consultant working for Albany Associates. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had a great six months out there doing very similar stuff, but uh, more on the uh, the government level stuff, working for the Ministry of Information. Can you elaborate? Yeah, so we, we were doing all sorts of stuff. So <clears throat> a lot of the stuff we were doing was very simple stuff that a lot of the, the military audience will be aware of you know we're doing media operations we were doing we we're escorting journalists we were you know making sure that the messages that, that we want to get out there are getting out via the right channels to to the right audiences most of the stuff we were doing was english language we weren't really delving into the the local stuff in in somali um but we trained up a, a small number of people to do uh social media uh trained them up on uh how to best use social media most of them worked for the government uh, in various departments uh, and the idea was trying to get some of that grassroots voices into the mainstream uh, and start countering some of the, the narrative that was coming out on the Al-Shabaab side because they were, they were very much dominating the information space. So we were kind of doing counter-propaganda. That, that sounds very grand. It's, it's not. It's just getting a, an alternative message out there. Uh, and that's what I was briefing on at the conference when, I'm, when I met Paul and he invited me to join I3Gen. So, so what were Al-Shabaab pushing? What, what were they trying to do? They do, they do? they do all sorts of stuff. So <clears throat> it's very much the, uh, the propaganda of the deed. Uh, so they'll do, they'll do an attack. 
but the the main effort is not the actual attack it's filming it getting the message out there and 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 spreading their message whatever it might be whether it be a threat whether it be look at us aren't we doing a good job on what we would consider simic civil affairs type stuff you know they give out aid uh, or goats or food or whatever it is that they're giving out they'll film it and, and that's the message the actual activity is kind of second so just um for people listening yeah. or watching right who i'm going to clue al shabab are because <laughs> believe it or not there's some civvies listen to this right um g- give give an o- give a give an overview of, of your al shabab so t- go on just so really brief al, al shabab is 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 kind of the uh, the military wing of what was the islamic courts union which was for a short time uh, the government in somalia before it was uh, pushed out of of mogadishu uh they're an al-qaeda affiliate um uh, and they are essentially the the main terrorist group in the horn of africa uh, a number of attacks uh, the recent attacks in um, in nairobi uh, and the westgate attack a couple of years back that was that was al shabab the uh, 14th of october car bomb uh, which killed a large number of people in mogadishu was, that was al shabab there is a small uh, islamic state group up in the north uh, but it's tiny in comparison how how what countries are they in al shabab uh, so they mostly operate in uh, somalia uh, but they do have, uh, they do operate across the border in Kenya uh, and and up in the the north, up towards Puntland, Somaliland. Um, when it's inter- what what's interesting with with the terrorist organisations now is, as as sort of commercial organisations and companies have seized on, uh, realised and seized on the advantages that social media can bring. The I mean the sort of the terrorist organisations do and the the first one I think of. When I think social media terrorism is ISIS, yeah, the beheadings, yeah, yeah. all of that, um, and and so so what you're saying with Al Shabaab in Somalia, they weren't just spreading sort of the fear factor with the attacks and stuff. They were also they were also getting out on the social media, yeah, the good news things, yeah. But, so how just, just like we would do, just like we, we we did in Helmand, you know, every time we were, you know, going around uh, taking the vets out to uh, to the farms and teaching them how to look after their animals and and check their animals, just like we were opening bridges and schools and doing all that civil affairs simic type stuff, they do exactly the same. Uh, I think going back to your point about um, uh, about ISIS, everyone thinks that these groups do social media or or media really well. They do. It's not great. It's not perfect. I think they they appear to be better than they are simply because they're unchallenged. You know, you go in with a heading uh, a beheading video. You know, you've escalated up to into the red zone straight away. There's nothing we can do to counter that apart from to say it's disgusting. We haven't got anything of the same shock value, and therefore we're not gonna we're not gonna get the same traction. Um, I think we're getting better at it. I think we're getting much better. At, you know, you only have to look at this year with the 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 snowflakes poster campaign, the paras. TV documentary, the raw recruits at sixteen about Army Foundation College, Harrogate. You know, we are getting much better at, at s- selling ourselves, um, especially in social media. And actually, we're now starting to see much more engagement on social media. It's not just broadcast anymore. It's not just here's a good news story about the Reg doing something in Kenya or, or whatever. It's more about engaging with our audiences getting that two-way conversation going opening ourselves up for criticism and questions and giving ourselves the opportunity to tell the story and and at the end of the day that's what it, that's what it all comes down to yeah the the the, uh, the other thing with with terrorist social media is that it's a gift for news outlets it's, oh, a, yeah. it's an absolute gift because they, they instead of journalists like in the old days having to go digging around trying to get their own footage or or get a story it's get it's put online, yeah, and you know it's super. It's, but, it, it's, it, but it's not just it, so, so they help promote it. It's like ISIS don't have to do anything. Post a video, and the media will will get it out there for them. But it's like <laughs> it's just like everything else. You know, how many times do you look at the you know the, the the news feeds on social media and they're posting videos that you've already seen? Because the fact that it's gone viral then becomes the story. <clears throat> oh, millions of people have shared this. Yeah, we've we've all seen it. We were the ones that shared it. Why are the news outlets? sharing it back to us and the it's interesting we've got ventured onto an interesting topic here the quality i think the quality of online news um has just taken a dive a nose dive um because and this is i'll, I'll go to the bbc with this one uh, um 
because that's what I visit regularly just to get my heart rate flipping, going through the roof with, with frustration. <laughs> is that, uh, is you go on the BBC website as an example, and they all do this right in different ways. And you, and now uh, I'll scroll down, you know, just have, I'm just have a look at the headlines, right? And I'll scroll down and it'll be, um, literally a little scroll down on the flipping homepage and it'll be five reasons why veganism or, 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 um, ten things that da 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 da. Or, or it will be an article made up entirely of tweets. Yeah. Of tweets. And you'll have a headline and you click into the article and it will literally be screenshots of tweets. And the, and the news is, and it, BBC aren't the only ones to do this, but he, I'm thinking, where's the fucking journalism? Where's the journalism? But what you find now is, uh, and, and this is the joy of social media is, is people can now select their, their sources of information. And so you only have to look at, you know, some of the people on your on your previous podcasts. You know, people, if you want a political opinion from somebody whose opinion you might value, you might go to Johnny Mercer, see what he's tweeting about. And because you like what you like, because they're like you, you go, well, he's ex-army. You know, he's obviously got a bit about him. He knows what he's talking about. He's not afraid to say it. So what's his view on this issue? You read it and you go, yeah, actually, I kind of agree with that. So, and it, it, it's, you know, politics aside, that's what the beauty of social media is. Unfortunately, the downside of that is you create echo chambers. You follow people like you, they have opinions like yours, and therefore the echo chamber just starts to work. But actually, social media gives you access to all those other sources of information. You know, I don't particularly like what Russia Today puts out, but I follow them so I can see what they're pushing out so I can understand their point of view and how they are interpreting some of the the same events that are going on, but they look at it from a completely different point of view and spin it a different way, and they bring in different spokesmen and, and all, all the rest of it. Yeah, so, you know, and they 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 then manipulate it for their own for their own ends. You've got to be aware of, uh, yeah, you've got to be aware of um, when you're looking at things online in the, in the same way, right? That on fi- on Facebook, and this isn't. You know, years old it's almost common knowledge now that you read a story on facebook it's not necessarily true right uh, you know you it's cl- clickbait you click yeah. in and the store and the, or there's no story or it's completely something i was trying to sell you the same thing happens on the on the on the news on the media outlets it, 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 twitter instagram uh the bbc website the sky news website the same thing happens right except it's much more subtle they they the headline is twisted in the same way it would be on newspapers back in the day, and it's, except it was harder to get away with because it's on paper. People tend to get pissed off if there's if if you, you know if you open the newspaper, fifth, or even now you open the newspaper and it says um, this is a headline and you and you went to page four. I'm gonna say page three. <laughs> you, go, <laughs> you went to page four, right? And and the story was sort of nothing to do with what the headline was, yeah. or it or the headline was just twisted to make it sound more drama drama than yeah, it was. Get, but you, it gets your attention. You'd be outraged, but yeah. in the paper you go. What the f- flipping lying to me? It's because di- it's on. It's in print. It's different online. It's not. So, so you get those clickbait headlines, and, and like exactly what you're saying there. Big problem is the echo chambers now. So, uh, and and it's one thing I'm really aware of when I'm reading. So I'm really aware of when I look at the BBC website. I quite often you're picking on the BBC an awful I, lot because it piss me <laughs> off. <right? laughs> Hello, friends of <laughs> <on> the BBC. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, BBC commentary in Warwickshire have done me good. They've, had, they've been having the radio show, but. We're on about the online. Anyway, uh, I'll click across the sky because I want that balanced view, yeah. right? And in the same way, like uh, Chloe Westley on, and you said about Johnny Mercer, like Chloe's hardcore conservative, and I follow her, but I'm aware that when I'm reading that, if I if if I'm if that's the only thing I'm I'm, I'm following, then I'm I'm more likely to go be to to get gradually get in line and my thoughts be in line with what she's to thinks, be conservative things influence. You've been so influenced. I try and get exactly. I want that balanced thought. I want a balanced view, um, and people but, have got to be aware of that you need to you need to have that balanced view. You read something, they go, "I think that's rubbish." Well, you back it up by going look, look at the go over the across the fence, go jump the fence. Yeah, look yeah. what they're saying, and that's one of the beauties of the the military community online, both serving and and former serving and, and veterans, is that we do represent all different parts of society. You know the reason we're talking today is because we're both ex-military and we've kind of been connected through social media and in exactly the same way is is you can find every side of the argument 
within that military community and more often than not there are exceptions but more often than not we can have those difficult discussions on on a on a, almost on an equal level and we can disagree with each other and then but at the end of the day it comes down to well you would say that well you're a boot at you or you would say that because you're power edge you know and it all comes a bit of a, a bit of banter you know and at the end of the day we all point at the RAF regiment and go ha 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 five miles of death <laughs> but you know what I mean I but never we- said that rough <laughs> edge that was the guest I love you. Go on. Uh, but we, but the thing is that we can have those conversations, and and you know we can re- we, we can allow it to get to to a certain extent, and and sometimes it does go too far, uh, and sometimes you know it does border on on trolling, which you know isn't the way to resolve an argument. But we can have those discussions and those debates because we share that common ground of common service and common set of values and uh, uh, you know and all that kind of stuff and i think that's that's the real beauty of of the military community on social media is we don't necessarily mm-hmm. fall into some of those echo chambers we don't allow ourselves to be polarized because we've experienced something different you know we've we've realized most of us have realized in fact i, I would say all of us you know because serving in the military gives you that opportunity to travel overseas and see different cultures and see actually in this country we have it pretty good and yes our, our system is not perfect but most of the time it works you know do, do you not think th- this week set aside maybe <laughs> <laughs> do you not think that the military is um is quite echo chamberish in that we are i say we i'm a general 100 percent generalizing but we're generally more right leaning well, flipping heck, I say not even right leaning, but all the way right, generalizing, it, loving Maggie Thatcher, it, all those things. So yeah, so I, I, I think I think we do, but I think that is that is representative of society in general. I think one of the one of the problems that that most people see on social media is it's the it's the extremes on the left and the right which seem to get and it always boils down to this: he who shouts the loudest, you know, wins, which is ridiculous. And yes, while most people in the military, I would agree, are probably right of centre, um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think traditionally we are quite a conservative country. Um, you know, you know, look at officers, you know, going to a mess dinner wearing their red red jackets. You know, it's it's symbolic of you know of days of empire and all that kind of stuff. And and I think quite a lot of people in the military, the reason we like those traditions and the reason why we keep talking about you know we still celebrate waterloo and we still celebrate all these different battles and you know we wave the colors and we parade and we march up and down and we beat the drum and we play the pipes you know all that kind of stuff is is part of being in the military and it reminds us of, of former glories so i think yeah i would agree most of us are probably on right of center middle ground right you know I do get upset when I hear people say, you know, that we're all far right. We're not. We're not all far right by any stretch. I'm, I'm left to centre. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> left. I'm slightly left. I, I found myself becoming more centralist. I must admit, but um, yeah, I see. Yeah, centr- that's a new gym. It's centrist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that I'm going to be backing an independent at this point. But um, mm. but yeah, my 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 views have have swung all over the place. But you know, that's the joy of being in the military. You know, I've I've served under, you know. Conservative MPs at PMs, you know, uh, Gordon Brown visited us when we were out in Helmand. You know, as as military people, we just get on with it. You know, we're very apolitical while we're still serving. I think one of the issues we have with the the the, the ex servicemen and the, and the veterans community is social media suddenly gives them an outlet. You know, they've not been able to partake in politics while they're serving, or it's discouraged. Um, and then all of a sudden, we're giving them this free channel where they can talk to anybody and they can shout as loudly as they like. And for for a lot of them, it's the first time they've been able to do that since they were 16 or 18. Mm. And so you get some quite bold views being put out there, which aren't necessarily aren't necessarily agreeable to all, but they're voicing an opinion. And that actually, in times like this, at least you've got an opinion. You know, people can disagree with it as much as they like, but actually have an opinion on on something and and use social media to to talk to those things but at the same time be there and be supportive of the rest of the community you disagree with them on one issue but actually you know we've got more in common than 
and what divides us as, yeah. as ex-servicemen. And actually, that you know, just look at some of the stuff that's going on at the minute with you know the book auctions, with the charity fundraising, with you know all the stuff going on with the military charities at the minute. Actually, the vast majority of that is is us as a community helping ourselves. It's huge at the moment. It it's is massive. It's, what I like, um, what I like about what's going on with social media in the military at the moment, and the veteran side of things, and, and I'm referring to really around the mental health aspect, and 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 things that are going on to support that, or just or just military endeavours, like people like Jordan Wiley, right? Who's he's he's raising money for charities that I'm not, former guest of this show, yeah, <laughs> the first guest, first, yeah. So he's raising money at the moment. For charities that aren't military charities, mm-hmm. but the fact that he's an ex-military guy doing, like doing good work, and his and his popularity is getting really really big. He's really knowledgeable. He's he's a fantastic uh, ambassador for the military. Yeah. Um, where was I going with that? So yeah, so so that whole social media thing, getting behind people, that's huge at the moment. Yeah. What I like about it, it's positive. Yeah. Oh my god, I've you know literally over the last. Over the last few days, been having a few conversations with different people around Twitter. And w- when I I jumped back on Twitter after I stepped away for years ago, I didn't really ever use it properly. I never, I never really used it to any extent. And then when the when the podcast started, I sort of jumped back onto Twitter. And man, it it it, I became I realized straight away with it. Wow, it's a pretty it's pretty flipping negative. Like yeah. the majority <clears throat> because it, 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 the negativity and outrage. It generates so much uh, interest, likes, retweets, conversation, arguments. Right, and people love it. It's so ne- it's really negative. Much more than Instagram. Much more than Facebook. Uh, what else? Are LinkedIn. So, super negative. And what I so I, I was aware of that straight away. And then what I what I found was myself over a couple of months. I'm not that person. I don't really do bitching. Right, but because I was on that platform, my stuff be- started becoming a bit negative. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and I caught myself a good time putting the post on. I think, why am I doing this? And it was slagging something. Up. Why, am I, why am I doing this? And I had to consciously stop, and I have to consciously think positive. Um, and and but what but what you've also seen, <clears throat> particularly in, in in recent times, is you know you look at some of the advocates that we've now got out there. You know, are are how we are represented publicly as as a community as a group is is changing. You know, you only have to look at the success of the uh, the SAS Who Does Wins documentary on Channel Four. You know, um, Jason Fox put out his his book Battle Scarred about his dealing with his inner demons and his, his you know what made him leave the military. Um, Have you read but, it? Bri- yeah, Brian Wood. Brian Wood's another one. You know, he's taken that story uh, that he that he describes in the book. Cheers, mate. And um, you know, he's turned it to the positive. He's in Cyprus this week talking about mental health and saying you know, if you don't come forward and talk about it. A, a, as a group then then you're doing yourselves a disservice and actually you look at you look at jordan you look at johnny mercy you look at you know the guys who are, are kind of celebrity veterans now they all have a very positive message to tell and whether that be about charity fundraising about mental health issues about veterans issues veteran suicide veterans homelessness <laughs> we're all trying to pu- pull in the same direction and i think that's what that's what social media can do for us as a community is it enables us to reach people through very similar to the old the old regimental network used to do and you know and then that leads into the military charities and we're all we've all got you know social media as as a you know as a general channel whether it be you know facebook twitter instagram whatever you want to use it gives you that direct access into those target audiences where you can say right i you know so and so's gone missing, you know. Retweet, post him. Let's let's find him, you know. Or you know, veterans, you know, he, he's fallen on hard times, and all got somewhere where he can stay for a couple of nights, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it comes back to this this ability to self help, which is what we've always been about. Yeah, but we tend not to do it with the mental health. It's bizarre. Yeah. Uh, but it's not bizarre. It's not bizarre. The reason be it. The reason is because this is this is a, it boils down to this. No, unless you. I don't disagree with you on, right? This is what it boils down to the mental health side, which is why things are so brilliant at the minute. Because, so go back. It's because the stigma against mental health yeah. perceives as a weakness, and you've got to be mentally strong to be. In the, you've got to be mentally strong to be in the military to some degree, right? And then, and so the the admittance of okay, I'm not feeling great, right? And that's I'm, you know that's really boiling that statement down. I'm not I'm not I'm not great. I'm not optimal at the moment. Yeah, 
fucking all over the place with Mike. Um, it is, a, again, a missing defeat. And in that culture of the military, Army, Navy, or Air Force, that's not a, that's, it's seen to be frowned upon. So you're afraid of saying it, right? Um, def, I'm uh, probably, you could, I'd say most predominantly with, the, with the army, with the infantry, right? Um, but what, what I love about what's going on with social media now and things like other podcasts, like Declassified podcast, uh, like, uh, Cine is Guild mm-hmm. podcast, you are your actions one with Gaz is it's 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 making it normal to talk about to talk about it because people who are still got that stigma in their head about the mental health thing i completely understand it it's just what it's just how it is people serve it now you know they have it admits like yeah even now we have that fucking hell no you know yeah even refusal to acknowledge um Life's hard sometimes, whether you're in or not, right? And that's for anyone. So and the transition doesn't help, you know. And that's and for for a lot of people, it's either immediately post tour, you know, during that decompression phase, where you're just like, thank God that's over, and all of a sudden it all boils up to the surface, or it's caused by another stress factor, whether that's leaving the military or getting a divorce or whatever it might be. Um, you know, you know, I'm in my twenty fourth year now, having joined up at nineteen. And, you know, my roughest patches, you know, back in the late 90s, um, we never talked about it. We never talked about it. Nobody ever said, you're feeling all right? You know, you know, I, I left with, with quite a significant injury. Um, and, um, yeah, it wasn't till years later that I realized that the, the source of the problem was the painkiller. And I had a mild addiction to the painkiller, which was making me depressed. And it's only now that I look back at those times and go, yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, you know, for me it wasn't drinking, it wasn't you know unusual behaviours or anything else like that. It was the fact that you know I'd been prescribed something to help me. What was it? Over. So I had a I had quite a significant ankle injury uh, from the commando course, um, and then that carried me through to my first unit, and I was just masking the symptoms with the painkiller, um, and the painkiller was making me depressed. It was cocodamol, and one of the known side effects is it can make you depressed and so it was it was making me depressed and i thought it was depression about the injury and the fact that i couldn't be at that optimal level you know which is expected of a of a young troop commander um but yeah looking back now it was blindingly obvious what the problem was but nobody ever asked me you know it was you know just go down to the med center and get more painkiller you know i'm still struggling with it you know there's more painkiller crack mm. on you know, back to the old days of you know, take two and a and a and a hot wet, and you'll be fine. That was mate. I used to cocodamol was in my burger or day sack all the time. Yeah. Not used to take everyone cocodamol a proof friend, stick it in there. And if you you know you get a drama, <clears throat> pop a co- cocodamol a proof friend, and you just crack on through it. Um, but it wasn't until years later that you know I got you know, I got some muscle spasms or something like that, and I was prescribed cocodamol again. I was like, oh, I remember cocodamol, and then I took it and. Days afterwards, I was just miserable. Really? At, you know, I just became not a nice person to be around. And then I came off it again and was back to my normal self again. So I suddenly then looked back at all the other times I'd been on it, and it always coincided with getting injured, being prescribed it, and then just being down. And I always thought it, I was down because of the injury. It wasn't. It was because of what I was just, So now I just take something different to hide everything. Well, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm now a big fan of the rum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello to my yeah, sponsors mate. at Kraken. Um uh, Right, you mentioned uh the Snowflakes podcast. A uh, podcast. <laughs> podcast. Do not podcast on the, po- the, the Snowflakes the, the podcast. Snowflakes posters. <laughs> the Snowflakes posters. Yeah. What did you think of that campaign? So I because you had the posters, and there was a company in videos, right? Yeah, so right. so the, the the posters came out, and I, personally, I think, stroke of genius. I agree. Cause the whole of the military disagree. <laughs> the whole of the military did disagree, but I, I always go back to the same argument. If you don't like the advert, you're probably not in the target audience. And it's not just that one. And yeah, we, we've had some shockers in the past. You know, we've had some really dodgy recruiting like drivers. Give me an um, there was the ones about, is it all right to cry? You know, <laughs> which, which is fine. The TV adverts were better like, when they're piling up the ration pack on someone's head or when they're, um, 
I like the one of the uh, the hard looking troop sergeant, and he gets sent a tea bag through the post, and he sniffs it, and it reminds him of home, and you can see him kind of welling up a bit, and then one of the lads just comes up with a hot water and says, you, "You're going to need this or that." Those ones I kind of like, but I don't think they appeal to everybody. I think the genius behind the the snowflakes one, and you know the millennials, you know tiring everyone with the same brush is people re- rebelled against those stereotypes and then you look at the adverts that then went with them you know the girl pushing the shopping trolleys i didn't the see the park. videos yeah i haven't seen any adverts so there's the girl that pushes the shopping trolleys around and everyone just says you know she's a waste of time you know because she's just taking too long to just stack them up uh, and you know she's a perfectionist she wants everything just right and then you've got the kid who's on the the gaming late into the night because he's showing endurance and perseverance and wants to get to the next level and this that and the other those are like but but for me what what nailed it as kind of the three-pronged attack was the fact that you then had the raw recruits at 16 documentary come out at the same time talking about young people going through the army foundation college at harrogate which shows it shows basic training but it shows it in a way that we treat people as humans they weren't scripted they weren't they were allowed to say how they're feeling and it was a proper fly on the wall documentary so you got to see the good and the bad which would appeal to not only young people considering the career but also to their parents and a lot of the emphasis was put on the parents and the gatekeepers as to why this is a good career for young people but at exactly the same time you then had the power edge one come out men of war you know with uh, major fox and, and the rest of the guys showing that more stereotypical side of the army that actually if you want to be a hard bastard and jump out of airplanes you can still do that you don't have to be on the slightly softer and fuzzier side but for me what really hit home was you know i i I joined i applied on my 18th birthday so i had all the forms in front of me i had the, the royal navy royal marines i had the army and i had the RAF. and i signed all the forms on my birthday put them all in the post on the same day on my 18th birthday while I was still doing my A-levels at school. And then I got all the things back and I went away and did selection weekends and stuff like that and eventually settled on on joining the Marines. But the number one thing for me, my number one motivator, was that there were people saying I wouldn't do it. There were people saying, you're never going to do it. And so when the final choice came through, you know, which one am I going to join, I went for the one that I thought was the hardest because I wanted to prove so many people wrong that that was my motivation and it was slightly foolish of me I was 19 years old by the time I went down to Limpston I was so focused on passing the course I never actually considered what was coming next you know that you would actually have to go and do this job because all I wanted to do was pass the course to prove everyone wrong and ever since then that's kind of been a motivation for me so I I have a lot of empathy for people who set themselves a challenge whatever that challenge may be and for a lot of us that challenge doesn't come until you leave the military and then the real challenge starts Mm. because you've got to reintegrate you've got to stand up on your own two feet you've got to run your own business you've got to whatever it might be there are real challenges there um so i I, i'm always slightly empathetic to the underdog the person that sets themselves a challenge no matter how many people say you're not going to do it you know, you only have to look at some of the stuff that's going on with, you know, Jordan and his rowing dangerously with Nims. Nims, yeah, climbing all those mountains have you met him? and such. No, I haven't. What a dude. N- never mate. met him. What um, an absolute dude. But again, coming back to our, our, our central theme of social media, you know, what a great challenge raising money for some, you know, great causes and getting that message out there through social media. And because. The technology is there now. He can be on top of a mountain and send a tweet. He can post videos. He can do drone footage over you know, base camps. He can visit schools and all that kind of stuff. It's all there and it's all... And as a community, that's our opportunity to then get behind him. And whether, you know, you want to be... You know, whether you want, you know, the big backers and the big sponsors or whether you just need a few quid from, from somebody that, that's, you know, wants to help out, you know, it's, it's our opportunity. It goes back to your point, you know, it can be so negative and there are so many divisive issues out there, which we're never going to agree on. You know, there's always going to be people of differing views. Well, actually, let's focus on the things that are, we do have in common and the fact that we do like to help each other and we do watch each other's back, you know, 
And it doesn't matter which part of the forces you're from, whether you serve two years or 20 years or 22 years, it doesn't matter. You know, the fact is you have a shared experience. And and that's that's what I like to see. And that's, you know, you can get very negative. You can find yourself in that negative echo chamber. But actually look for those opportunities to step outside it. You know, look at um, uh, my mate Carl uh, doing his book auction for Lloydy. Carl? Russian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, you know, he's done loads of stuff. In, but, you know, he started off just doing the fan dance, you know, every time. And he did it, you know, in memory of Lloydy. And now... You know he's uh, he's an ad- he's an ambassador for Ordnance Survey. You know who'd have thought it? Mm. Mm. Um, going back to the the, the snowflakes um, campaign, the, the the argument I think the the the, the problem that's that, good um, coffee by the way. I think it's uh, <laughs> I think it's it's a uh, Green Beret coffee. Funny enough, <laughs> that's why it's so good then. <laughs> <laughs> Green Beret Coffee Company, and it's. Uh, uh, which which is it? I think it's the Veterans Blend or Sniper Blend, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's There's good a shout out. <laughs> There's a shout coffee. out, Greenberg. Well done. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the problem that military had with it, military personnel, if they had the problem with it, was that there was one is that we don't. And I actually saw uh, saw or heard this or read it. No, I read it somewhere. Um, we, oh, I think I had a conversation. We don't want those kind of fucking people in the military. We don't want those kind of people. That was the first one. Was I, was that? I'm just taking a wild guess here, but was the person saying that no longer in the military? I can't remember. I can't, I can't remember where, oh, okay. or I can't remember where I read it or had the course, who I had the conversation with, right? But we don't want those kind of person, people in the middle of the military. The, the thing with that is that one, well, it's still, it, it's not the military aren't saying, uh, we're, lo- we're lowering all our tests and selections and, and all that. And so snowflakes enter. No, those people have to still go and do all the same stuff. stuff. So you're still going to filter out the dross, right? Yeah, that's what yep. training's for. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, and the second one is, and if it, if that's your opinion, right? We don't want those kind of people in the military. Then you have a problem with those people. You think they're weak or, or they're not valuable in society. So, let's say, well, let's give an example of of the gamer. Yeah, mm-hmm. rocks up, goes to attend training. So he goes, he's going to get that that person, man or woman, boy or girl, is going to get something positive from the training. It's going to improve in some way, shape, or form. Improve them as a person, right? That's not to say I'm saying they're bad. I'm saying if you've got the point of view that they're a moron, yeah. right? We don't want them in the military. But they turn up, they go and do the training. At the very least, they get experience, even if they only do a flipping week, right? Yeah. They've got some form of experience and then drop it after a week. But that that person is an improved, arguably, member of society. So, all right, you don't want them in, but it, it's actually great for society like it goes back to the national service argument should we have it should we not i i i was think i used to think no don't have it yes we get society we don't have it because it'll reduce the effectiveness of the, of the british forces i think that's what i used to think i don't think that anymore i don't think that anymore i think the i think that yes have national service everyone should do a minimum of two years or x amount of whatever because for the same very same argument at the bare minimum you've got a whole the whole country right has got military experience and so that's not because oh great you can fight in a flipping world war rather than fight off an invasion or whatever that's because having that experience is better for you 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 faced you faced hardship whether you wanted to do it or not you've gained those you've been you've been out in the cold and wet and you you know how to deal with hardship better mentally you're stronger as a person maybe only fractionally Mm. Right, you know, and and so it's better for society. On the net advantage is great. Yeah, it's great. And 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 you know, if if people are genuinely of the opinion, I don't want to do national service because I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the armed forces. You know, I'm a pacifist. Whatever it might be, that that's their choice. Um, but there are different forms of service. You know, you could join the reserve. You know, I, I'm I'm now 24 years in, 12 in the regular, 12 in the uh, in the reserve, and, and that was. That was my transition plan. You know, what are you going to do after the army? I'm going to join the reserve. That would that was my plan. But you can volunteer. Uh, you can volunteer as an adult leader with the scouts or the cadet force, or you could work in a charity shop or whatever. It it's that idea of giving something back. It's that idea of being having the opportunity to develop yourself as an individual, but give something back to society. And I think that's one of the key arguments for the people that say bring back national service it will sort everything out it won't you know a hooligan is still a hooligan you can focus some of that attention and you can drive them in a certain direction but if they're really against it then they're not going to go along with the plan so why not focus that energy 
on coaching a sport, you know, joining a football club, whatever it might be. And I, and I think, you know, the current situation that we're in, we're so polarized, we're so in or out, we're so blue or red, we're so black or white, you know, it's either on or it's off. And actually, you know, at the end of the day, it gets dark. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You know, whatever day Brexit happens, whatever day we call a referendum, a general election, whatever, you wake up the next morning, just like with the Y2K bug, you know, the world's still spinning, the sky's still blue, the birds still sing. And as a community, ex-servicemen, we kind of appreciate that, you know, particularly those of us that have done the, you know, the, the more difficult tours. And you kind of go, well, why are people making such a fuss about it? You know, do they not realise how lucky they are to even have a political opinion, to even have the ability to vote freely? Whether whether you vote one way or the other, at least you've got the ability to vote. So let's just appreciate the things that we do have and just get on with it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, ju I just think, you know, when you mentioned the Y2 bug, it dawned on me that we're in 2019 and there's people in the military now who've got no idea what we're on about. <laughs> yeah. The Y2 bug, they've got no yeah. idea. Google it. <laughs> yeah, Google it. Um, um, you're absolutely right. And, that, you know, there's, there's, people, there's people joining up now who, you know, you know if, they're, if they're 19 now, they're, they're you know, you know, they're not going to remember 9-11. No, no. Um, good, good, uh, something you mentioned there, I was, I, I was going to uh, sort of pop them in earlier. Is, is that a good point about the polarisation, the other thing with the social media and, 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 and sort of news, is you, it, it puts people into camps, right? You, you align yourself with Brexit or Romania, red or blue, gays in the army, Gays shouldn't be in the army. National service, not national. You you put yourself to a team, and uh, no, you, you you find yourself put to a team, and, and and then that makes it, it makes people much less open to the idea of changing their mind, you know. So it, it, because you, but but which, it's, it shouldn't it, be like. But that. it's human psychology, you know. It goes back to the, and you you would have learned this on your psyops course. Um, it, we as a nation do this all the time. We just don't realise it. Um, you know, if you're an Everton supporter you know, you're blue and you don't like the Reds, whether you're Manchester City, Manchester United, whether you're Leeds United or whatever. But when we go into a World Cup, we're all England supporters. So our allegiances shift all the time anyway. So why is it so difficult when it comes to other issues? Why can't we take the best of both and say, well, actually, yeah, I like that idea, but I also like that idea. So let's combine the two just like we would in military planning. You know, course of action one, course of action two, course of action three, you know, left left flanking, right flanking, and hey, did a little straight up the middle with bags of smoke. You know, I don't like that, but I like that. And actually, I like that bit of that one. So let's smash those two together and come up with a decent plan that might work. Why don't we do that with some of the other problems and issues that we face in life? You know, let's look at all the options, take the best of all of them, and, you know, get on with it. Mm. Yeah. Um, I I like uh, yeah the social media. I, I, I like, I'm very glad you're in social media. <laughs> it's uh, not the only thing we no, do. We I know, do other stuff know, as well. We'll keep on it a minute. What? You, <laughs> um, what? What's your opinion on if you've hey, got one? You're going you're to hold me down to this one, aren't you? No, 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 no. It's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. No. <laughs> so we're going to talk about America, right? Okay. So America. America. Yeah. Hello, hello, uh, hello, listeners. In what America. was I talking about yesterday? If <laughs> I was talking yesterday, this is completely off topic, right? I was talking yesterday. Um, where was I? Somewhere. I was talking about Team Rubicon, and um, and I I said, "Who was I talking to?" And they were saying, "What? Well, yeah, well, blah blah blah. What you do with him or that?" And I said, "Blah blah blah." And I'm also work with Team Rubicon. I didn't say Team Rubicon for some reason, and I haven't seen this film in years. Team America popped into my head. And I said, Team America. <laughs> oh my God, we're talking about <laughs> Team America, not Team America. He's like, oh, Team America. It's Team America. Team Rubicon. And I couldn't stop saying it. Every time I said Team Rubicon, I kept saying, it was like a tick. Team America. Brilliant. It's a great film. What a film, man. It is a great what film. What a film. Um, it's game changing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, America. Um, <laughs> what do you, th what's your opinion on, um, uh, when the the accusations that sort of Russian uh, Russian bots, social media, influencing the American presidential campaign to get Trump into office. So, and when I'm asking about this, I don't see 
Okay, so the outrage, Russians are influencing the campaign, uh, the, the, the election, and, and therefore it's, it's bollocks and Trump should never go in, or whatever, right? There's no difference, I don't think, between uh, that outside influence happening because uh, an, an internal influence, because it's all influence. It's all influence. So why is it okay for Russians, Russian bots, to use social media to influence people's opinions on whether they should vote for Trump? Clinton, whoever else, whoever else is in the race, right? To exactly what the US do, what companies do, what the parties do, exactly the same way as the UK do. And why, why is, why is it not okay? Why, what would you think about that? Uh, it's a difficult one because you know the Mueller report was out this week to say that there was no collusion. That's not to say there wasn't Russian interference. It says you know that there was no collusion. Um, there was, and. You know, there's plenty of evidence to was show what, that collusion there, or interference? no, no, the interference, the use of bots, the use of trolls, the use of this, that, and the other. Um, that that is going to go on, uh, and I think one of the what one of the reasons that we're in this situation is is social media um, is a bit of the wild west at the minute. You know, we don't have international laws to do with um, the information environment. Um, there's nothing in the Geneva Conventions to say that you can't do what they're doing um it, it, in many ways that you know that the, the same could be said of cyber you know as long as you're not switching off the power to hospitals or you know flooding valleys and, and all the rest of it you know there's nothing there's nothing in there as yet so the standards by which we set ourselves have not been have not been agreed yet internationally so what the russians have done and other countries are doing it is they, they've seized upon an opportunity and the technology allows them to amplify those messages and they can steer the conversation in any way that they choose. And they, they could have backed another candidate. Um, I think they looked at which candidate was going to rock the apple cart. I think that was quite clear right from the start, which one was just going to go ahead and do his own thing anyway. Um, and so what they've done is they've, they've, looked at, they've looked at their target audiences They've done their target audience analysis. They've worked out that those audiences primarily get their news online these days. And, um, you know, they've targeted them. And what they've done is they've, they've polarized the argument into those, those two camps, whether it be an in or out, whether it be liberals versus uh, Democrats versus Republicans, whatever it might be, whatever the argument is. But they've also done lots of other activities. And you, know, you have to look around the conversation to do with hybrid warfare. You know, the little green men going into Crimea, um, Russian advocates uh, embedding themselves within organisations like the NRA, you know, the, 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 the spy story there. Um, and and steering the conversations and, and pulling those levers of influence to get the result that they wanted. And the result that they wanted was, you know, put pressure on NATO, you know, get, get NATO to start squabbling amongst themselves. Let's start unravelling the European Union, which is as a trading block, is, you know, the main competitor to, to Russia and China and, and other organisations. Let's start making mischief in other areas to try and distract people from other stuff that's going on around the world. But no, you're absolutely right that there, there is no difference to the techniques that other countries use. It's just now the technology allows them to do it directly. So you don't have to go through newspapers. You don't have to buy off journalists. You don't have to do all the diplomatic wranglings these days. You literally go straight to the audience and you bombard them with the messages that you want them to hear. And the technology allows you to do that. And so it doesn't matter which political campaign or advertising campaign or even recruiting campaigns, you know, none of the snowflake stuff appeared on my timeline on my facebook simply because did not mind good point because i'm because yeah. i'm too old so i wasn't targeted by that campaign it's no different um it's just you know it's just the way you use it you know are you trying to use it for good you know are you trying to recruit people are you trying to convince them that actually a career in the military is is pretty good or are you trying to influence them to vote one way or another in an election or a, a referendum that you know is going to be polarizing and actually you know that was their their main objective they didn't really care who won they just wanted the countries to be so split and you only have to look at how close the referendum was you only have to look at how close the 2016 election was you know it, 
they're all pretty 50 50 they're binary in nature you know our political structures are done in such a way that you've got a government and you've got an opposition you've got republicans you've got democrats you know we already set the conditions for exploitation and all they've done is they've driven that wedge in there nice and hard mm. the problem with the with the social media and the, and the laws and that you can't you can't it's not possible to to have international laws binding global things is it because i mean the, like twitter for example um they've got different rules so for getting blocked or a, a, a tweet report or whatever or uh, no not reported talk, talking rubbish for for breaking their use usage rules yeah. it varies from country to country yeah so for example in india or india i think or, or bangladesh india you, like to commit blasphemy you can't do that yeah, yeah you can't do that on twitter that's against twitter's usage policy yeah. you know it's, it's imagine be, it, it's just an example so having those international laws you can't do it but it comes back to w- but does that not and this is the thing with social media it is by its very nature social so what we need to do as users is we need to say what's acceptable and unacceptable should they be any policing so we, should I, I think there be any policing I, I by think, the organization i think by there Twitter? should i think there should you know violent content um you know anything to do with abuse anything to do with you know exploitation all that kind of stuff vulnerable groups that sh- that should have no place on social media raising awareness of those issues um absolutely the actual content no i think um it's it's where you draw the line i think it that i think is the issue and i think that then boils down to users and it goes back to this you know this idea of community you know you follow people who you like and you like them because they're like you so actually as a group you should in theory as as we do as a community we should share those common values and if we say something is accept- unacceptable within that community then yeah it should be unacceptable and actually you know push those people to one side and say no that 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 opinion is not welcome here you're only saying that because you're trying to piss us off um, and I think as a community, I think we are targeted. I think there are people out there who target us as a community. Whether, when you say us, you mean what military community? Yeah, the military community. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that there are a number of false accounts on there that, that I've seen who just express an opinion that sits well outside of our core values. You know, and you just kind of get, you know, it looks like a military account. You know, it's got, you know, I was X regiment there, so I was, did this tour or whatever. Um, I think they're less likely now because I think we as a community, we've become so attuned to, you know, uh, people, you know, dressing themselves up and, you know, wearing medals that don't belong to them and, you know, stolen valor in the US and the Walter Mitty Hunting Club in, in this country. We, we're, we're a lot more attuned to it. Um, but I think there are people out there um, and social media allows them to be anonymous where, you know, they chuck in the odd hand grenade into the conversation just to see the ripples that it causes, and where there are splits, then exploit that exploit that split. Whereas actually, we should be doing the opposite. We should be going, hang on a second. We as a community share these values, and actually, yeah, you can say that, but we're not going to react to it because we don't think it warrants any attention. Yeah, that's definitely the best way to deal with it. Definitely the best way to deal with the negative stuff. Yeah, block um, back, block bang rub. Well. You say block bang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, block bang. Right? I, I mean, I didn't even bother blocking. You know, it's uh, I, 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 I've have had, I've had very, very few negative comments since I started this, as in the podcast. I've had when I say few, I think two. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're doing better than I am. Now. I, I, know, yeah. I, I, I have quite a high tolerance. <laughs> I have quite a high tolerance, but there are a couple of things that if you cross that line, the conversation's over. Uh, but, I'm not even going to give you the time. Of well, day. I, I, I don't even address it anyway. But, but so going back to the because the, they want the, attention, they want absolutely, attention. But it goes back to this mental health issue. If you block somebody, they assume that they've won. It's a sign of weakness if you block them because you can't carry on your argument. Exactly. No, and, and just stop giving, the conversation there. Exactly, block don't, them. Don't even start the conversation. You uh, they get that blocking them is attention. It's like it, 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 they yeah, get an attention. A, yeah, it's acknowledged, and they them. can tweet about it. Look what I did! Oh, you fucking blocked me, or whatever. Like the two—I mean, the two comments I have ridiculous. Well, no, the second one was valid. The first, <laughs> the first one was it was something stupid. Um, on he's on he's on Facebook, and he just—it was a comment underneath the, the the podcast page. Um, and it it just said uh, 
He just said, glor- literally, some dude, snowflake, <laughs> glor- and he just said, glorified baby killers. And it was a picture of me and Jared. So I used to have a code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Jared, and, and whoever the guest was. And, and he just, and then he just, this guy's, yeah, glorified baby killers. Fucking hell. Yeah, good, good, nice one. I'd left it, you know. And then the other one was, uh, uh, Lev, it was on a podcast with Lev Wood. It was a YouTube comment. Amuse me. Amuse the girlfriend as well. My girlfriend. It said, um, Lev Wood's cool. Lev, Lev Wood's a dude or cool, but the lad is thick. <laughs> <laughs> the lad being me, I thought, well, I've got no argument with that. I never said otherwise. I never said otherwise. Not going to argue with that. I never said otherwise. Yeah, left that one there as well. But just don't give, just do not give yeah. it attention. Yeah. Be, be, they absolutely, because they want it. But this is this comes back to the importance of social media training. Uh, one of the blogs I did recently was about um, training on social media should be like a weapon system, you know. So the first thing you do with any weapon system is you learn how to do the NSPs on it. You learn safe handling. How do you unload it? How do you make it safe? How do you then put it down and say right, fine? Everyone in the military should do that. Everyone should be able to set up an account and use it responsibly, even if you're just doing it to check the headlines. And catch up on what your favourite pop group are doing, whether that be Girls Aloud or whatever. But then you've then got your people that should use social media as part of their job. So whether you're a media and comms officer on an RAF station, whether you're the Tweeto on a ship, whether you're the nominated person for your battalion. You the know, what? The what run, on a ship? The Tweeto. What the hell is that? So the Twitter officers on board Royal Navy ships now, all the Royal Navy ships now have an account. And the officer on board is the Tweeto, tweeting officer, just like Dento, Is that, isn't it? That's an actual title, the that Tweeto, is there, the Tweeto, military title. That is absolutely, hand on heart. So, don't shake your head, I think flipping, it's a great idea. Flipping Royal Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Royal Navy have got some pretty good drills yeah, at the minute yeah, when it comes yeah. to, when it comes. Yeah. but what I'm saying is that all those people, whether they use it as part of their appointment, because they're the Tweeto on board a ship, or whether they're doing it because they want to be themselves and they want to be an advocate for what we do and they want to, you know, they want to be themselves, they want to follow the accounts. So they, if you're going to use it regularly, then you need to be kind of the trained shot. You know, you need to have the ability to what to do if people start trolling you, what to do, you know, how often do you need to change the password? You know, what what makes a good tweet? You know, are you signposting? Are you tagging? Are you using good imagery? That kind of stuff, trained shot. Then the people that do that really well then become your marksman. And then the people that do it super well, and you can actually put them in and, and counter some narratives and adjust and become very influential, they're your kind of snipers at the top end. But that doesn't happen at the minute. So what we've got is we've got lots of people trying to do good things, and it comes back to training, just like everything else in the military. It always comes back to the training. So one of the things we do with I3Gen is we try and teach that as as a matter of course starting at that very low level safe handling so if you've got a sergeant major who doesn't want to be on social media it's something that these teenage daughters do or whatever give them that first block of training just so they understand what social media is what it can do for them and actually if you're going to be leaving the military soon you might want to think about setting up a linkedin you might want to have a twitter account you might want to adjust your Facebook settings because you no longer want all those ex-military people on your Facebook and you just want it to be families and friends and holiday pictures, whatever it might be. But they have to have that, that level of safe handling and then push it on from there. So the, with, the, with the Tweetos, right, Royal Navy, I know, and I know that the, the, I was taking the piss and slagging them off, but the, I know that oh, you mentioned Major Fox earlier. Yeah. I know that there's, there's definitely a drive on a 16 Air Assault Brigade with it. It must be because you've got. Well, they are major- the most photographic, uh, the f- most photogenic brigade in the army. Absolutely, of course, of course. But, uh, l- slightly less so when I left. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Royal um, Marines are very photogenic as well. Lots of Norway sunsets and stuff. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Forty Commando. <laughs> um, what was I saying then? So there's a dri- they've obviously, there's obviously a drive. Yeah, so it's sixteen hours up again. You've got. That Major Fox has popped up, and there's other company commanders from Three Power popped up. There's the brigade commanders on there. You know, you've got different COs and stuff popping up onto it. I, I, and the same with the Royal Navy, like you're saying, there must be happening in the RAF as well. Yep. Um, but so the aim must be a top down. Is it a top down drive to 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 look? Let's get more get more um, prolific on social media, more uh, more uh, exposure on there. In the aim of what recruitment retention? 
I, I don't think it's necessarily to do with recruitment. I think it's more to do with the fact that we need to we need to inform. You know, we are at the end of the day, we are paid for by the taxpayer. And gone are the days where the Ministry of Defence can just say, This is what we're doing. We're doing a big exercise in Oman. Boom. Done. And everyone goes, Okay, so the the army have got a massive exercise in Oman, so what? What we need to do now is we need to explain to people that the reason we're doing an exercise in Oman is because they're a, a, an old ally of ours. They're one of our, you know, one of our key allies in the region. We do these exercises <clears throat> once every however many number of years. It involves these troops. We're using it to do experimentation with drones, with sensors, with new weapon systems, whatever it might be. But then also have the brigade commander's vision of it. Then have a battalion commander's vision of it then have a company commander a platoon commander right down to you know a sniper pair saying you know this new site's brilliant you know thanks very much taxpayers you know i'm now more lethal out to mm. whatever range but i think the next step from that is we then have to have the engagement so if you look at what uh, major fox was doing after the para thing you know he was doing q a sessions people were then sending him going well how many attempts do you get at p company how far is it? How heavy is the stretcher? You know, all those kind of things that generate that interest. And that and generating that interest, like you were talking about earlier with those the, the clickbait headlines, you've got to generate the interest. If you don't generate the interest, you know, if you're just putting out a press release, it's not going to generate any interest. People will read it and go, yeah, great, brilliant. But if you generate that interest, you've then got them hooked. They want to know more. They're thirsty for something. You've, you've, caught, their, you've caught their attention with something. You know, you've dropped a hook into the water and all of a sudden they're, they're, they're interested. And then you can take them to the next step. You can then say, well, you know, did you watch the last episode? Did you see that bit? Did you, you know, what did you think of that? You know, can you imagine how it would feel? Uh, and, and it's all to do with the, the lived experience. I'll have a drop more of that yeah. if there's going. Um, it's probably freezing cold by now, but who yeah, cares? Right. Um, so we're getting much better at the engagement side of it. You know, it's become much more two-way and and I think that's that's why it started off bottom up, but I think we've now got that top down support, you know, and people are encouraged to do it. And I've not, you know, I've not seen any, um, I've not seen the 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 CO's course or anything else like that. But I'm pretty sure that they're now being briefed that actually you might want to consider using social media not as a leadership tool, although it can it can help. Um, but also, you know, it can you know look at professional military development. You know, look at our education system, how we educate our officers, how we talk about leadership, how we take new ideas, whether it be from the US or Australia or Canada or NATO. Look at those new ideas. How do you get them into the mainstream? Well, you could write doctrine, you know, but nobody reads it. I know because <laughs> that's one of the jobs I used to do. Nobody reads it, so there's no point putting it into a doctrine publication if you're not going to train it. So why don't you directly access that target audience? Because most of our people are now on social media, whether anonymously or or openly. Let's just say, and you look at the the, the Centre for Army Leadership at Sandhurst, they're pushing articles out. You know, the most recent one's written by a sapper saying we're overcomplicating leadership. Here's an article I've written about leadership from a bottom up point of view. All the senior people in the army have now read that going, he's got a point. Are we overcomplicating leadership? So not only have you flattened the structure, but you've also given direct access to your audiences through social media. And, you know, you only have to look at Wavel Room, the Cove in Australia, um, some of the stuff that's coming out of the US. You know, the US Marine Corps University are pushing out some great stuff. Um, Canada as well. Um, you know, there's loads of good stuff out there. And whether it's just signposting someone towards an article or answering a question or whatever it might be it's developing that military social media community where you can have debate you can have discussion you can share ideas whether those be ideas about leadership whether it be friendly banter whether it be talking about adventure training whether it be about veterans issues whether it be signposting towards combat stress or you know all those other things can all be done through that one channel and we all become slightly schizophrenic because 
we identify we, you know we we self label in so many of those different groups you know we're a serviceman we're a soldier we're a veteran we're you know an advocate we are interested in wildlife conservation we're interested in what's going on in the middle east whatever it is that you're into you can find it on there and you can have direct access to those different audiences mm. with with the encouragement of social media use within the, within the military what 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 do you think about the practice of um punishing people for incorrect social media use. <clears throat> I'll give you two examples, right? I'll give you two examples. Okay. So there's one uh there's one that a a a, a, a guy who who left a unit um so he's out of the military. Mm. Facebook put a post saying not nice things about the the then CEO and RSM. Um and a colleague, an ex-colleague of his, who was still serving in that unit, liked the post. <laughs> okay. The RSM was friended with him on Facebook, saw that he liked the post, and it resulted in an Agai action. Yeah. Right, that's one example. So Agai, for people listening to the Civ Pop, Agai is like, it's just a, a disciplinary, it's the disciplinary procedure within the military. So it's, it's a, it can at be- At the lowest level. level. At the yeah. lowest level. It's a warning. You get a written warning. You you did wrong. So you basically got told you should not have liked that post that was slagging me off. You're getting an Agai. Um, and then the other example is, ah, um, where you had- I can't remember which unit it was. Bunch of guys in uniform, um, and they bumped into Tommy Robinson, and they had a photo with Tommy Robinson. Yeah, and then you had the whole "I am Soldier X" um, thing. Um, uh, Soldier X? No, I don't know that. What's that one? Yeah, so so basically, the 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 individual involved uh, was our guide, um, and then everyone came out in what? support of him, saying "I am Soldier X." Um, the individual involved with what? Tommy Robinson. Ah, but there was a bunch of them. Yeah, there was a bunch of them, but there was one. Who there was one it? individual who posted it, and I think it was taken on his phone and stuff like that. Um, and then you had a whole load of people then jumping on board that campaign, and that's when I started to see certain accounts which were deliberately doing it to link the British Army to Tommy Robinson, right? D- and d- reposting and supporting it. Yeah, reposting okay, and yeah, supporting yeah. it, and and kind of giving it more. And then, of course, you then had the the recording of the. Um, I can't remember which regiment, but you had a, a recording of one of the officers saying, not in my bloody regiment, which then just amplified it even more. I'm referring to what? The Tommy Robinson ah. event. So I, I, I think... But what's wrong with you, that? So, what's wrong with that? Why? See, the problem here is, right, it's, what, is, what is the issue? What, why is it not okay to be support to support Tommy Robinson? What, in the same way, why would it not be okay to support someone who's... Uh, Who's I don't know. I, I give an example. The other side so, of the so in what? the in the military, you're not supposed to be involved in political activities. So, if you're in the military and you carry a mod ninety, you are not supposed to get involved in political activities, whether that be the Conservatives, the Labour, or anything else like that. I see. Okay. So there is there is that I element. That. There there is that element to it, which you know is one of our strengths. We're apolitical. It doesn't matter who's in power. We we continue to serve. Um, for me. As, as a relatively junior commander, I would have always gone back to the, you know, if you're going to say it on social media, would you say it to the person's face? Nine times out of ten, you probably wouldn't say it to the person's face. If it's a negative thing. Yeah. If it's a negative yeah. thing, you know. So don't say it in the first place. Yeah, or don't say it in the first place, or just, you know, say it privately. Don't don't type it and press send. Um, I think, you know, the first lot of guidelines that came out for the military so- use of social media was 2012. And it said on there, don't post anything while you're angry or drunk, which was probably the... Good advice. I would have added horny to that list as well. Um, <laughs> have you had issues in the past? Not me personally, uh, but um, but I have been I have been sent a number of uh, photos that I do not wish to describe involving Kinder Eggs. Um, what was his name? Who sent them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had to then make a phone call to the CEO and say, you might want to have a, a chat with this young gentleman yeah. who uh, has posted this stuff. Um but the the time I saw it that that come out the worst was after the murder of uh, Drummer Rigby, and what you then had is you had a large amount of of, of anti Muslim sentiment amongst veterans, which then spilled over into serving members, whether they were retweeting it, liking it, or posting their own content, and at that point, you then you know you're you're open to 
ag eye action simply because you are posting stuff that that firstly you shouldn't be posting because it could lead on to to other things and accusations of inciting racial hatred and whatever else but it boils down to this idea of would you say in public would you say in front of your commanding officer your rsm your company commander or whoever would you say in a pub and actually, social media is a lot like a pub. You just walk around listening to the different conversations. You join in the ones that you, you're you interested in. Would you say it in public? Um, and actually, because most people on social media say who they are, or it's easy to work out who they are, you're representing your unit. You're representing the army. You're representing the Ministry of Defence. Whether you, whether you intend to or not, and then that boils down to, you know, does the actions of the individual undermine the operational effectiveness of the said unit or or defense it's too blanket though i mean it, going it back to the tommy robinson thing I, I i don't know where i sit with tommy robinson okay i don't know i i i my am i i'm i'm um I, i'm only saying this as uh, just to point out that i didn't bring up the tommy robinson thing because i, I think you should be supported i think what he's doing is right I, I don't know where i sit with it i'm not sure i'm absolutely not sure where i sit with what he thinks and the things he says and how much of what people say he says is what he actually bloody thinks right um but the reason I bring it up is, if, if if it's that political side of things, you can go and have a, you can, guaranteed, you can go and have a photo with Theresa Flipping Nay, and you wouldn't get pulled up for it. You could go and have a photo with Jeremy Corbyn, you would not get pulled up for it. Yeah. You would not, and w- what's the difference? What's the difference? I think it's because he represents one of the extremes across the the political spectrum and I, and I think that's that's where it und, uh, that's that's where I think the line is drawn is that, you know, does does Tommy Robinson's values and standards match our own? Do they, do they do, you know, because people, it's guilt by association. You know, do people believe that the army is right wing, far right? Yeah, there are some people out there who do believe that. Um, and they will throw it back in our face at every opportunity they can. Why give those people that ammunition? You know, fine, have your picture taken with him, but don't post it. Or if you do post it, post it on a platform that you know is not open to the public. And that the only people that are going to see it are your friends and family. If your friends and family then do a screen grab and then post it, well, then you need to have a word with your family. It's a good point. I'm thinking there what I was actually thinking there what I would do if I bumped into him. Uh, and, and then and if I bumped into him and thought, oh, let's have a photo with him. I, I, and I, again, I'm out of the military now. I absolutely would not post it. And the, and again, I don't know where I sit with what he thinks. Whether whether I think what he, some of what he says is right, I don't know where I sit on it. But I wouldn't post it because. Be, but you've be, had be, so many great guests that you you know you don't need to because no, you you know your standards are higher than that. <laughs> Not me. I'm talking about the other I'd guests. Have, I'd have Tommy. I'd be interesting. But I wouldn't post it because I know, and it's just backing up what you're saying. Actually, so I, yeah, I see what you're saying. I wouldn't post it because people would make an assumption. Yeah. They would make an assumption. The, the the morons would make an assumption. Hugh Kia is right wing and he flipping hates Muslims is what they would say. Yeah. What they would In think. exactly the same way as if you posted a picture of yourself with Theresa May, people would assume you're conservative. If yeah. you did it with Jeremy Corbyn, they would assume absolutely. And 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 that's um I'm trying to think of the In proper the same word way for it. military they probably assume I'm conservative. Yeah, absolutely. Um I'm trying to think of the proper word for it, but it's a rule of thumb. Heuristics. Um, it's heuristics. Heuristics. It's you just a made that a, word up. No, I didn't. It's a it's a spell rule it. of thumb. Spell it. Um, H e u r i s t. Definitely something. Right. Heuristics. Anyway, it's basically a rule of thumb. It's a mental shortcut. Okay. So you see something and you make an, a, a quick assumption of it. It's quick thinking. So I see you with Johnny Mercer. I assume that you support what he stands for and that you're obviously conservative. You know, that's that's a mental leap on my behalf. I might be right. I might be completely wrong. But it's that it's that association. And that people then pigeonhole you. We can't help but do it. It's how we make decisions in life. Um, you know, you see a car. It's discrimination. You, it, you discriminate. It is we a form. It. It, it is a form of discrimination. Absolutely happens. Yeah. You cannot. You cannot get around it. We as human beings bloody discriminate. But but the but the issue is, what do you do with that assumption? Yeah. You know, absolutely. fine. Make that assumption. You know, uh, not everyone likes me. I can get over that. It's then what you do with that opinion that then may affect me or may affect other people. Yeah. Absolutely. Which brings us back down to the punishment bit. When people cross the line, anyway, you know, if if people are unsafe with a weapon system on the range, you deal with it. You know, if people are gobbing off, you know, I was the 
duty officer and got called into Taunton by the police saying, we've got some of your lads here. How do you know there are lads? Well, because they're running up and down the street shouting Charlie Company and they're, late and they're naked. So, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely yours. Um, you know, people make those assumptions. It's then what do you do with that information? You know, what what are you actually going to do about it? And I think that, that's where you you come down to the punishment bit. You know, do you want to just stop the behaviour or do you want to stop the behaviour and make an example of those individuals to make sure then other people then don't do it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. good Lessons point. learned. Yeah, it's good. I've learned there. Yeah, I, in, in, so in which case, I think I think that maybe, I think maybe punishing them was the wrong way to go about it, but go, oi, pull it down. We're going to train them. you now. We're going to yeah, train you. This is a sketch. Do it again. You're going to get your Absolutely. And, and if, you, if you go back to the training piece, if everyone is a trained shot then you shouldn't have those problems. So what is I so I3 gen, right? Yeah. So let's come back to that. So you are when you're talking about you training people in social media use and management. We we train yes. them on a much broader topic than that. So it's basically information operations what we in the military would recognize as information operations. So it's everything from opsec persec uh it's your presence, your posture, your profile, how you come across whether that be in person, online or on you know whatever platform you're you're doing it on um and so essentially we we do kind of three main activities we've got the training side whether that's on planning we do planning uh we do a lot of social media stuff because that, that's kind of flavor of the month at the minute um our group of associates include people who are specialists in electronic warfare um cyber uh, strategic communications much higher level uh communication stuff um so we do that um and we've done that for NATO. We've done that for the UK. Um, we do uh, capability development. And whether we need to step in and help a unit or an organisation because they've got a gap in their capability. Uh, give me an example. What, what do you mean? So, so, for example, you've got a company which, uh, or a charity or, or an organisation or even an individual who is unsure about how they're going to plan their social media campaign or they're unsure about whether they want to be in social media or not, um, we will go in, we'll have a look at the problem for them, come up with a strategy and say, right, we recommend that you use this platform, that you make it very personable, we make it about you as an individual, or you as a company, or you as a charity, and we will target these target audiences because they are going to be your most likely donors, sponsors, or people that will respond to your your messaging. And then the third part of it is we red team. Um, so if you've come up with a um, a strategy or a plan, we'll come in, we'll have a look at it, we'll pull it apart, we'll do that kind of, what would the bad guys do? You know, what will your competitors do? Uh, and we can either do that as kind of a paperwork exercise, reading through the document, or if you're in the exercise phase, if you're a military organisation or you are a company doing it for real, we will come in and say, right, you know, this is what your competitor will do. This is how I'm going to undermine your argument. You might want to think about this, this, and this. So those are our kind of our, our three key areas, and and we can do that for large organisations, large headquarters, right the way down to um, veterans who are starting their own companies or just want to portray themselves online in a more professional, more approachable, more engaging way. And we will talk to them about imagery we'll talk to them about signposting we'll talk to them about how you tag how you how you tap into that wealth that resource of the the veterans community and say well you know have you talked about you know have you thought about teaming up with you know this company who do t-shirts or this company that do coffee or this company that do this that and the other and you only have to look at the wealth of organizations that are out there to say you know wouldn't it be great if you had somebody who would kind of just retweet all your stuff yeah. Because their audience is much bigger than yeah, yours. Absolutely. And therefore you start to generate it's that snowball effect. You know, we've gone from snowflakes to snowballs. That snowball effect where, you know, you, you're amplifying that message. So an individual who's who's leaving the military, who wants to do something, whether it be charitable work, whether it be fundraising, whether it be start their own company, can tap into that and with a bit of guidance, a bit of training, can say, Well, actually, yeah, because I can do this and I can do that. And then we'll come back in six months time we'll red team it and say right did you do this right could you have done that better here are our recommendations mm. have another go and we'll, we'll come back in in a few more months it's critical time. these days as, as um, and it's critical these days for, for an individual or for or for a business right or for charity or whatever to and 
I'm obviously this is a statement that is flipping obvious to get your online game right. But from from for an individual perspective, X Village you're getting out whatever. The first impression is no longer the, the time you walk in for an interview. It's no yeah. longer the time you walk in for a, a meeting in business. The first impression. Is when they is Google you. Online. Yeah. It's online. Yeah, they it, look at your profile. They look it. at yeah. Absolutely. And they make those assumptions we were talking about. Absolutely. You know? And you and, and so in the same way, like I like my eldest is now getting on social media, um in you know, she'll Instagram and stuff. And in the same way I say it were I try and reinforce to her, be careful what you post, because in five years' time that come back and bite you in the backside. Yeah. You know, in three or four years' time when she's sort of in college or whatever, and she and she rants about, I don't know, Tommy Robinson. Yeah, yeah. Or something else. And three years later, she's going to vindicate me just it, it, because it's going to be there. Um, but, but the thing is with it is, is it's a social media game. People think that, and I've learned the hard way, and I'm not great at it. Um, my missus has picked up the baton with the hair shower stuff and sort of started growing it afresh on there. She's really good. Yeah, she's really good at it. Um, but would welcome advice, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's um, come. Yeah. Uh, but it's that, you can go and start, let's say I go a veteran and start a business. You can go on, yeah, I'm going to set up a Facebook page. This is stuff. Facebook page, Twitter account, Instagram, um, account, right? And you think, oh yeah, I can do this. And you, and you, and, you, and you're going through it and you're posting your pictures, doing your posts, like you think you got your handle on it. Great. But without the knowledge of it, and this isn't, I, I'm, this isn't me plugging i3, right? It's for my own benefit. I'll come on, uh, my own, my own experience, right? Is that, you're going to go and do your stuff. You're going to waste because you're not doing it in the right, in the best way possible. The amount of flipping time you waste doing it. And I read a book, 2012. It's called Inbound Marketing. Mm -hmm. Inbound Marketing? Yeah, Inbound Marketing by Brian Halligan and Dharma Shah. That's the names. And I think in the first page, it's, when I, I would refer that other people to that book then, it was all about social media marketing. Back in 2012, it's out with eight now, seven years old. I hope they've updated it. If they have, I'm going to read it again. And I remember reading it, and it was three pages into it. It's not a big book. And I th- I'm thinking, oh, my God, I wish I'd read this six months ago. I yeah. wish I'd read this six months ago because the post that was making, and it could be two lines. It could be a picture. I, there was little ways I could tweak it, little, little ways of changing the statement I was making, how little tiny things. Yeah. Tiny, all that was wasted. Tiny things such as using oh, a man. question mark. I've, I, yes. Because it's engagement. You, use, you've got to drive engagement. Use we. <laughs> yeah. You know, use links, use images, all that stuff. And and it goes back to, to one of the old adages of advertising is that, you know, 50% of your time and your money is going to be wasted. But I can't tell you which half that's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about what happens at the other end of the process. Are you getting people to come and visit your page? Are people making orders? Are people buying your t-shirts buying your coffee are people sponsoring you are they fundraising for you all that kind of stuff but that brings me back to my original point and and i think you tweeted about it the other day you know we're all mutually supporting call signs here you know the information environment is a battle space and just like the jungle the arctic or urban it has its own set of ttps it has its own set of skills and drills if you learn the basics and do the basics well and anyone will tell you this everything else becomes a lot easier and it's just about learning those basics and practicing them and using all those mutually supporting call signs, you know, because there are people out there who want to help you yeah, yeah. and will be willing to give up some time, you know, half a second to retweet something. Yeah. You know, just that one little bit of effort yeah. just to say, right, guys, there's someone over here is asking a question. I don't know the answer. Does anyone else know the answer? And you can yeah. guarantee you someone will signpost you to a website or another person or some piece of information and it will go, yeah, got it. The, 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 a big one for me, um, realization for me off the back of that book was, and over the year, so since uh, I read that book, I read a few businesses and, um, and so sort of, yeah, self taught the social media side of things. And like, like I said, I'm not great at it, but one of the biggest things for me, realization in terms of strategy and, the, and how you're trying to achieve things is that the, the, if you've got a product and you want to sell that product, probably the, the least, the, the least effective way of going about selling that product is posting about your flipping product by this. You want to, uh, uh, you, you, your aim is you want to sort of attract as you know that in my marketing side of things you want to attract people to your product to your website to your shop generate through, the interest you want to generate interest but not through shoving it down you don't want to spam them yeah. right with spam mail with your adverts right you want to draw them there for other reasons and um 
you want to attract like-minded people, get the target audience there, and then oh, and also come, yeah, yeah. they attracted to you because of this. Oh, and, and you sell this. Oh, great, I'm interested in that as well. Yeah, I nailed it the other day, and I missed the trick. Right, I nailed it the other day. It was my, it was my, my social media crowning moment. Right, I did an article. So same, in the same way with the HR podcast, with this podcast, how do I, how do I get out more people? Great, and I have those people to support it and retweet and and like and share and all that. Right, but how do I get it out more? How do I get more people learning from this, like this conversation, mm-hmm. things like that? And it's that in my marketing that well have you ever have you heard of the term alliness? Ali Aliness. Love of it, Ali. Right. Ali well I saw a couple of things online um saying about the origin of the origin of Ali. Yeah. What, what does Ali mean? And yeah, I thought yeah. I thought, oh yeah, it means cool or I thought, oh, there's, there's more to it than that. Yeah. And I, I, I obviously it's, well, le, le, allegedly a, a power edge term, right? So I did this article and uh it's uh, me, the meaning of Ali Aliness and Aliness saves lives, that phrase. Yeah. And uh and I did. I put this article online, and it's quite long. Cut the pictures. It was, it was a lot of wording because. It, and you think, uh. I put it online in the evening. On a that was on a, it was on a Wednesday or Thursday. Put it out. Oh, it was a Tuesday or Wednesday. Anyway, next day, nine thousand nine thousand visits to the website. That article it went crazy. Yeah. Which, that, and that nine thousand is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Other people think nine thousand a lot. 9,000 people read that article the first day. This is the last week. It's still going now. People yeah. are still visiting the site now. And the aim was to... Yeah, it annoyed me that it wasn't like a more broader thing about Ali and Aliness. And I, not that I've nailed the history of it, but it's what I was taught, and so I put it down. Obviously, people liked it. But it was the aim was to bring people... Because if... And this is that. This is the point I'm getting to with people listening to social media. The aim with, with, with social media strategy, the aim with the article was not to teach people about Aliness. It was if you someone can't te- you can't teach Ali. <laughs> no, no, you can't teach Ali. If someone knows the term Ali, Ali and Ali saves lives, right? Then they have got some connection with the military. So they then are going to possibly like the podcast if they discover it. Yeah. So those nine thousand people on that first day come to the website, Ali Ali saves lives. Oh, they're now on the HR podcast website and they've been exposed yeah. to the HR podcast. I didn't do an advert and say, come and re, come and see the HR podcast. I didn't. I post about something, nothing to do with the podcast. Nothing yeah. to do with the podcast. But it generates, the, it came. generates the interest, which drives the traffic. Towards, it's still going towards, now. Yeah. It's the people on, I guarantee people on it now reading the flipping article. Mental. Chuff. But I missed the trick because I, I, there's some basic things I didn't do on the, didn't do on the, on the page. Like, yeah, if you're watching this like, on YouTube, <laughs> the, the links in the comments below. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's other, like, I, there's, there's other things like on the, on the website, you can buy, Alan the Sears like stickers and like bumper stickers, laptop stickers, even patches. The money, like the money for that's going to start going to um, the PR, Power Edge Association. But mm-hmm. that was the other side to that. But yeah, I didn't do any sales off no. the back of it. But no. but that exposure is the point. I bring people to the podcast and and those products. I wrote about something completely yeah. different. You know, mutually supporting call signs. Hundred percent. It was amazing, and uh, I'm really happy with myself. That I nailed it. But it goes back to that social media side of things. You've got to be on the ball. So. Again. But but also you didn't plan that article to be a success. Absolutely, because, not. you know. Uh, I knew you'd be popular I've, amongst I've, Power Edge. I've, I've had just, because... I've had I've had military commanders say, "Well, we want to do a video uh, that goes viral," and you're like, "Well, we, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows what the secret ingredient is Cut for something head. to go Cut viral." Head. Yeah, yeah, possibly. We're not. <laughs> we're not going to go there. But sometimes those little golden nuggets appear. And you don't know why. You can't put your finger on it. It might be because someone with a huge following has just retweeted it. It might be because it's a catchy phrase that everyone kind of jumps on board with. Or it might just be that it was the right time, the right place, the right topic, whatever it might be. You know, if it had been a week earlier or a week later, it might not have had the same effect. But it had an effect. And because it's struck a tone it's generated interest people have then gone back to it and said hey mate have a look at this have you read this do you remember that you know it was that 2007 tour it was this that and the other do you remember when this happened do you remember when we were discussing this and all that stuff then generates that level of conversation and it's that engagement and it's the engagement that counts yeah it's it's, it's absolutely right we've got we've got a couple of minutes left okay uh so Shameless plug opportunity. Anything you want to talk about? Mention i three. So say more about i three. What um the, the service you do? Where people can get hold of you? 
Just go, go for it, mate. So the uh, i3gen website is very easy. It's i3gen.co.uk. Why, why gen, by the way? Do you know? Do you know? Have you heard of the gen? The term in the military? Duff gen. Duff gen. It's Puck nothing gen. to do with that. Puck gen. So the, the the three eyes are interest, influence, and intelligence. That's the three eyes, and we generate all of them. So you generate interest. That generates influence. And if you've got your influence right, you can generate intelligence off the back of it. And we do all sorts of stuff to do with open source intelligence and target audience analysis and that kind of stuff. That's the, the intelligence bit of it. So that's the i3. It's i3gen.co.uk. Um, all the links are on there. Um, our blog articles are on there uh, about uh, the social media training as a weapon system is on there. Um, I did one on third generation camouflage because I'm a bit of a camo geek, which touches on all sorts of things to do with deception and open source intelligence and bellingcat and the, the chemical weapon attack in salisbury all that stuff's on there uh the list of the courses that we offer are on there um if you are interested or you have any questions just drop us a line we'll be happy to answer all of them it'll either be me or paul my business partner and uh yeah we're here to help we are a mutually supporting call sign uh we're supporting not supported so uh, yeah if there's anything we can do for anybody whether that be a military organization a charity an individual company whatever uh get in touch and uh yeah we'd love to help awesome mate it's been a pleasure yeah really good thanks for the coffee my pleasure. Green Berets, <laughs> coffee's pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, mate. <laughs>